Hi, I'm Tori James, and welcome to Food Plus Body, where we explore how your body works from a nutrition perspective. Today, we're going to talk about fats. We'll look at why we need them, what foods contain them, and how your body digests them. Why do we need fat? Fats, also called lipids, help form cell membranes, steroid hormones, bile acids, which help you digest fat, and eicosanoids, or signaling molecules. Fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K, as well as certain phytonutrients like beta-carotene and lycopene, need fat in order to be absorbed. For example, if you had a salad with carrots, tomatoes, and a vinaigrette dressing, the oil, or fat, and the vinaigrette would increase your absorption of beta-carotene and lycopene. Without the fat, you wouldn't absorb much. Omega-3 fats are needed for brain, eye, and heart health. Fat also helps keep you full. Fats are found in plant foods like nuts and seeds, oils, avocados, and olives, and also in animal foods like meat, poultry, fish, eggs, and dairy products. These foods contain a variety of different types of fatty acids, saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated. These different types get their names from their molecular structure. Saturated fats have a carbon chain that is fully saturated with hydrogen. This gives them stability and generally makes them less susceptible to oxidation or spoilage. Higher amounts of these are found in butter, lard, higher fat meats, cheese, milk, and coconut oil. Unsaturated fats are not fully saturated with hydrogen and where the hydrogen is missing, a double bond is formed. Monounsaturated fatty acids are missing one hydrogen pair, so they have one double bond. Higher amounts of these are found in olive oil, avocado oil, peanuts, almonds, cashews, macadamia nuts, and avocados. Polyunsaturated fatty acids are missing two or more hydrogen pairs, so they have two or more double bonds. Higher amounts of these are found in soybean oil, sunflower oil, flax seeds, walnuts, and fatty fish. Omega-3s and omega-6s fall under this category. Trans fats are also an unsaturated fat, but their structure is different due to the partial hydrogenation process. They come from two sources. The manufactured form comes from partially hydrogenating vegetable oils. These are found in processed foods. The naturally occurring form is found in cows and sheep. Their ruminant bacteria create the trans fats. The effects of the naturally occurring trans fats are still being studied. However, the manufactured form of trans fat should be avoided due to their negative effects on health. In foods, the majority of fat molecules look like this. This is a triacylglycerol or triglyceride. It's three of these fatty acids joined to a glycerol. So how do these fat molecules get from the food you eat to the places your body needs them? Well, in order for nutrients to be transported around your body, they have to get into your bloodstream. And your bloodstream is a watery type of environment. And fats, well, fats are like cats. What do I mean by this? Well, let's take this cat and invite him to go for a swim. Cats don't like water. Fats don't like water either. In order for us to get this cat into that water, we would have to build him a special cat submarine so he could float around without being bothered by all of that water. In the same way, your body creates special fat submarines called chylomicrons, which transport fat through your watery bloodstream. Here's how it works. Before the submarine can be built, the fat molecules have to be broken down to a smaller form so they can get into the enterocyte. Remember these from episode one? These are the cells along the wall of your small intestine. This is where the chylomicron submarine is built. So when you eat foods with fat, they travel to the stomach where the enzymes lingual lipase and gastric lipase begin to break down the fats. Two hormones, CCK and secretin, are released which slow the emptying of the stomach into the small intestine. This is why higher fat meals stay in your stomach longer and keep you full longer. The muscular contractions of the stomach emulsify the fats into small fat droplets. As the fat moves into the small intestine, the two hormones from earlier, CCK and secretin, tell the gallbladder to release bile, 
and the pancreas to release pancreatic lipase and bicarbonate. These compounds, along with the muscular contractions of the small intestine, further emulsify the fats and break the fat molecules into mostly monoacylglycerols and free fatty acids, finally resulting in smaller fat droplets called micelles. These micelles are able to get to the microvilli where they can let the fats move into the enterocyte. In the enterocyte, the fat pieces are rebuilt into triacylglycerol and put into the fat submarine or chylomicron. The chylomicron will also carry phospholipids, cholesterol, and fat-soluble vitamins along with the fats. The chylomicrons can now move into the lymphatic system, bypass the liver, and enter the bloodstream so they can deliver the fats to muscle and adipose tissue. As they travel around dropping off fats, they shrink until they become chylomicron remnants, and then they travel to the liver where they are reprocessed. The fats that were dropped off can be used for energy or stored to use later. In a future episode, we'll look at how your body can use these stored fats. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.